Right, so Stephen here from the Canterbury Crusaders. Uh, as we all know, flyers were introduced in 40k 6th edition. Uh, so I'm just going to have a quick look through uh, Imperial Armour Aeronautica and, uh, and see what this Fordwell book hopefully brings to flyers in 6th edition. Uh, we won't be going through any of the Apocalypse units in the book, uh, just the 40k approved stamped vehicles. Uh, some of which have been in the more recent Imperial Armour books uh, but have received an update uh, now that 6th edition and this book has come out. As with all Forge World books, it's got a lot of artwork inside. Uh, a lot of it is very, very nice to look at. Uh, the book itself isn't too expensive either for a, uh, for a Forge World book. Only £26. Right, we'll start with the Thunderbolt Fighter. Uh, it's the first in the Imperial Navy section. Has just been granted the 40k approval stamp. Um, it's hitting in at 180 points. Um, however, it does have three hull points and armor 11, uh, which is pretty good. It's got three twin link guns on it to start with, um, two auto cannons and a las cannon. So it's pretty good at taking out vehicles or other airborne flyers. Uh, it's got a host of other weapons that you can add to it, along with uh, a bunch of other upgrades much like uh, the standard tanks in 40k um, however currently I would say that for 180 points for what you get it's pretty good however adding any extras to it will just rack up the price and it is only a heavy support choice for Imperial Guard armies so whilst it's alright and if you own one already it's probably worth it not sure it really compares to the old Valkyries or Vendettas in the fast attack slot. Lightning is a slightly cheaper choice. Um, again, however, it's only a heavy support slot for Guardsmen. Uh, does seriously suffer being 145 points and only two hull points, and it has one less gun than the Thunderbolt. Um, again, it's got a host of extra options, including Sky Strike missiles. Um, but again, if it's going air hunting, why not just take a Vendetta? Sadly, you're going to hear a lot of that when it comes to the Guard Flyers, at the very least, uh, going throughout this book. Now, this one's an interesting one. This is the Aquila Lander. Um, back up to three hull points with this one. Um, it's a nice-looking vehicle, at least. Um, again, it's not got an amazing amount of weaponry that can be added to it. Um, however, Sisters of Battle can take it as a fast attack choice and uh, Grey Knights can take it as a transport for Inquisitors and their retinues or sorry, henchmen warbands um, again, it's good sort of it's a nice idea um, again, fluff wise and model wise it's very nice um, I'm not sure at 110 points though it's really that good here's one of the major add-ons however for uh, for, for guard players out there. Uh, Vulture Gunship, um, again, just a massive room of options you can see on that left-hand page. Um, it's pretty much a, a Valkyrie Vendetta chassis. Uh, doesn't, however, have the transport capacity. Does, however, have Vector Dancer and Strafing Run. Um, again, massive host of options. However, both for the model itself and for the price tag, Really, one of the better options is that nice Punisher Gatling cannon. You know, twin linked, uh, it's got strafing runs, so it can be a ballistic skill 4 against ground targets. Easy enough to get inside things rear arc. T only a tiny bit more expensive than a Vendetta with the Punisher upgrades, and you're going to be doing a lot of damage, and you're probably going to glance at a vehicle or potentially take out a large swathe of a unit in one go. Sky Talon, uh, again, it's a nice fluff vehicle like the Aquila Lander, um, but it really, really only works for Elysian drop troops um, or something of that ilk. A very themed army, perhaps. Um, not sure it works so well in a standard force, uh, especially as it takes up a codex, um, a heavy support option uh, in the Guard or Elysian army. Although, actually, sorry, just reading here, it doesn't take up the force organization slot. Uh, however, to be fair, it can only transport drop sentinels, which are only found in the Elysian list, um, or Taurus or Taurus Venators from the previous Imperial Armour book. So again, unless you're running a heavily themed army or uh, you know having a 
fun game or a themed game, not a brilliant use of uh, 75 po- 70 points. Arvus Lighter um, again falls into the uh, the same trap as the Sky Talon Transport. Um, you can take one to three as a fast attack choice in Imperial Guard uh, or Sisters of Battle. So at least I suppose you could have a, a, a flying transport in a Sisters of Battle army. Um, it has got three hull points, um, but it has no weapons to start with, um, and the only ones you can upgrade it with uh, become snap fire only due to the improvised weapon mounts. So, all right, I suppose if you want to keep your unit alive for a bit, um, but again, not brilliant. Those seventy-five points per <laughs> per model could go on something much better. Now, the Avenger Strike Fighter. Um, Again, it's got a load of options. Uh, it clocks in at 150 points standard. Uh, it does have a strength 6 AP3 heavy 7 gun. Pretty good. Um, however, it is only hull points 2. And uh, the model, in my opinion, doesn't look particularly nice. Maybe it's just the way that some of the paint jobs I've seen on the Ford and Games Workshop websites have done it. But frankly, it, it doesn't look brilliant. Um, again... It's a heavy support choice for Imperial Guard. They have better in their fast attack slot. Um, Sisters of Battle might might find uses for it. It does have a large amount of options, uh, including missiles that grant no cover save, um, and most heavy weapon options from the Guard Codex. So I can see it finding a place in some lists, uh, but again, it's not. For what it does in a Guard army, it's pretty much useless. Um, Maybe Sisters of Battle can find a use for it. If they're not filling up the heavy support slots with other stuff. On to the Imperial Guard section here now. Uh, Manticore tank, the anti-air version. Um, again, it's it's a nice idea, but it's almost the price of two Hydras. Um, do you really want to field an, an anti-air Manticore for the price of two Hydras when two Hydras, in theory, could probably do a better job? Okay, it does have you know strength nine AP two heat seeking weapons so we'll get a re-roll to hit um, and it is on the standard chimera chassis but again it's for its points cost it just doesn't seem efficient right here's where we start hitting the, uh, <laughs> the really really meaty stuff the weapons platforms now you know they're, they're the hydra one very good it's basically a hydra gun uh, without the chimera chassis so it is missing uh, one hull point and two armour off the front. However, you can take one to three as a heavy support choice. Um, can give it camo netting if you can find a piece of terrain big enough to put it in. Uh, but it is only 50 points, so three of them for 150 points, same price as two mobile hydras. Uh, I would say is probably definitely worth it. Three is probably overkill. You never can, you're going to do more than kill something with three of them. But two of them, 100 points. I can see them slotting into lists and allied lists quite easy. Thematically, they fit in really, really well with sort of artillery armies anyway and foot guard. Um, so I can see them uh, doing the rounds quite easily. Sabre weapons platforms, um, nice and cheap points wise. Um, again, I can see them fitting into a, uh, a very thematic guard list or an entirely infantry list. Um, they replace heavy weapon squads in, in uh, platoons. Um, 30 points each, they can be uh, what twin linked heavy stubbers, twin linked heavy bolts, twin linked auto cannon, uh, or twin linked las cannon. Um, again, pretty good. Um, 30 points each, up to 50 if you go all the way up to the las cannon. Um, they count as artillery, they're immobile, but somehow they have the scout special rule. I'm not sure how that works at the moment, might be something you'd have to look into. Um, but all in all, they could be quite good. Uh, again, models are nice as well, so I could see them getting quite a bit of use. Right, um, the Storm Eagle Assault Gunship, the Flying Land Raider, <laughs> four hull points, only armor 12 all round, um, transport capacity of 20, uh, so that's 10 Thunderhammer Storm Shield Terminators, if anyone uh, is particularly keeping count. Um, whacking the uh, the Nova Marines special character, Terminator character, uh, to make them scoring. Makes them a bit silly, or uh, or even I believe you can t- yes you can take it in a Dark Angels army, so you could uh, back some scoring Terminators in there. 
Um, for what it is, decent points, command an array of weaponry. Uh, basically, it's a replacement for a land raider. It's just a flying one. Not quite as heavily armoured, but being a flyer, more difficult, more difficult to take down. Um, a lot of options. Um, massive vehicle, though. Looks all right, model-wise. Um, it's a bit like the X-Men jet, for, uh, in my opinion. But um, no, I can see quite a lot of people taking that. Right onto the uh, the Cestus Assault Ram now. Um, it's a very very recent upgrade, uh, having just been in the Imperial Armor update. Um, however, making it a flyer makes it even more difficult to kill with that front armor 13. Um, it's got the five plus invulnerable. Now it can flat out because it's a flyer. Its ramming is so much better. Um, still has the option of being able to carry ten Terminators. And now it's got that lovely 5 inch blast melter gun, which, uh, well, the entire template now works. So that is really good with its changes into sixth. Will it see any use? Um, 275 points. I've seen it used pre sixth edition. Um, I'm not sure how it will work out in sixth edition, but with its combination of heavy armour three hull points and it's five plus invulnerable I can see it being a very very good addition to the Space Marine Flyers uh, for those who don't have access to Storm Ravens. Land Raider Helios um, it's a Land Raider with all the uh, the pluses and, and negatives that you get with being a Land Raider um, except the fact that it has a, a missile launcher on top that has Skyfire um, and Interceptor and it re-rolls misses um, it has reduced transport capacity as well um, and it is over the cost of a standard uh, Land Raider so I'm not sure it will get to see any use except maybe in sort of like a dedicated AV-14 wall sort of Space Marine Army if you're planning on fielding a lot of Land Raiders um, but apart from that it's quite nice looking um, or at least I think it is um, I'm just not sure it will see any use Sadly, the same sort of thing can be said for the Whirlwind uh, anti-air variant. 95 points for essentially one twin-link crack missile a turn with Skyfire and Interceptor. It loses its other abilities to, to bombard. Um, so I'm not sure if it will see any use. It is, again, more expensive than the standard. And I, I don't... It competes with too many other units, I think, in the Space Marine Codex for it to actually see much use. But perhaps in like a 2K game where you've got more, where you've got six heavy support choices, maybe you'll see it used then. The Land Speeder Tempest. It's halfway between a Land Speeder Typhoon, so your heavy bolter and your missile launchers, and a Storm Talon, which has got your assault cannons and whatever upgrade you decide to give it. Um, I think as such. Both those other vehicles fulfil their respective roles better. Um, you know, a twin-linked missile launcher and a single assault cannon on a, a two-hull point vehicle, not amazing, um, especially when for 20 points cheaper, I think the Typhoon is better. Um, it has got the ability to turn itself into a flyer for a turn, however, it, it can't then shoot any of its weapons. So, again, I think it's a nice idea. Uh, and the model looks reasonably nice. Unfortunately, there are things in the codex that already do stuff better than this. Mortis Pattern Contemptor, uh, again, a very, very recently 40k approved item uh, that's received an update one book later. Um, again, it's pretty good. Um, it's front armor 13, and it has got three hull points, and it has got an invulnerable save, which is quite nice. Um, it can't take a drop pod outside of the uh, the special assaulting expensive fast attack slot drop pods that you can buy that are 40k approved um, and it has got some very good anti-air weapon options I mean for 200 points you'll have two twin linked auto cannons and a cyclone missile launcher um, which if it doesn't move do gain skyfire um, and I believe the interceptor rule um, yes, both of those for a turn. Um, 
200 points is it worth it it's it's good and it's nice again if you want to field like a dreadnought themed army um, but to be honest the best weapons it has are those assault cannons because uh, they're heavy six unfortunately they're only 24 inch range so they're not so good at targeting flyers um, unless you're planning on marching your contemptor straight into the middle of the board um, again though nice model um, reasonably okay points wise I think um, so I reckon you might see some use out of that Hyperius Air Defence Battery now I think this is if you're a Space Marine player this will be your, your go to anti-air I think for a while um, you can take four of them per squadron um, they're only 35 points each they're essentially a twin linked crack missile with Skyfire and Interceptor uh, for another 10 points um, you can give them all split fire but it reduces the number of turrets you have to three um, however for 150 points it takes up a fast attack slot um, so okay it competes with land speeders but and it costs the same actually as a uh, as a storm talon so essentially you're looking at do you take a storm talon or do you take one of these um, my personal option is I'd prefer to take one of these um, same points cost um, which you factor in the decent upgrades on the Storm Talon um, and to be honest it can target more anti-air things than the Storm Talon can although the Storm Talon can target ground targets a bit more effectively um, I however do think this will be the uh, the go-to anti-air for a lot of Space Marine players Orc Fighter Bomber um, to be perfectly honest uh, for 170 points this doesn't do anything in my opinion that isn't already done by the most recent update for the Codex Orcs, the, those lovely plastic flyers that just came out. Um, so again, it's you know it, it's a nice bit of fluff and it's a nice model, um, you know if you're into that sort of orcish design. Um, but I'm not sure how much use it will see uh, outside of someone already owning the model. I don't think someone's going to go out and purposely buy one of these models for its rules. The Attack Fighter, however. Um, Again, it suffers from the similar problem that the Orcs have just already had an update. Um, however, you can take three of them in a squadron, um, although they are pretty much only really useful at shooting down light armoured flyers. Um, you know, it's, again, if you're an Orc player and you've already got the model, there's no harm in taking it. It is a reasonably cheap unit to take. Um, unfortunately, I think it's eclipsed by uh, the new plastic Orc flyers. However, the uh, Orc Flak Truck, um, this is basically the Hydra for the Orcs. Um, okay, it's pretty much got the same sort of gun. Um, you're looking at a, a Strength 7, Assault 4, Skyfire, Interceptor 48 inches. So it's, you know, sadly it's not twin linked. And it is only Ballistic Skill 2. However, what this thing does have going for it is a, a special rule called Go, Go, Go. Um, it allows the flak orc, the flak truck, sorry, to uh, to move flat out, and still fire its flacker guns at a, uh, a flyer. So I can see that seeing a you know a reasonable amount of use, um, and there are one to three as a heavy support choice. So I could see them knocking a flyer out of the air pretty quick, and they can move around the board pretty fast as well. Flak track, it's pretty much the flak truck, only it has a transport capacity. Um, it's got pretty much all the other special rules. Um, so if you want to be charging a, uh, a unit around um, that can sort of late game jump out and uh, and grab an objective perhaps, um, then maybe this is worth it. Um, again, it's got go, 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 so it can zoom around the board and target flyers still. Right, the, uh, onto the Eldar now. Uh, we've got the Phoenix Bomber. Um, 225 points. Uh, it is only armour 10 all round, but it has got ballistic skill 4 and 3 hull points. Um, it's got a, a host of other special rules. It's got Vector Dancer, for instance, Strafing Run, um, and it is also Shrouded. Um, I personally think this is a very good ground attack vehicle um, because you can swap out, uh, basically you can swap out some of its weapons um, so that it's armed with a twin-linked star cannon. Um, two shuriken cannons and something called uh, either a phoenix missile launcher or a nightfire missile launcher um, the nightfire ignoring cover does pinning has heavy three and a three inch blast so personally I think it's a very good ground attack vehicle um, and I can see that perhaps getting some use if someone already owns the model um, however being a forge world flyer it is an expensive model to buy with real world money 
Nightwing, right, now this, to my mind, is possibly one of the better vehicles in the entire book. Uh, it comes out as 145 points, so it's the same points as a Dark Eldar Flyer, standard Codex Flyer. Um, it doesn't have any options um, as far as upgrades go, however it does have two Shuriken Cannons and two Bright Lances. Uh, it also has a 2 plus Jinx Save, uh, thanks to its combination of standard Jinx Save for being a Flyer, um, and it has Shrouded plus 2 and then Agile plus 1. Um, so as long as something doesn't ignore its cover save, it's pretty hardy, um, even with only two hull points and armor, armor 10 all round. Um, however, it does have that lovely Vector Dancer rule again, um, so it should really be killing a vehicle a turn, I believe, um, or perhaps glancing one out, or taking the last few wounds off, off maybe a large creature of some kind. Um, I personally think that's a really, really good um, points cost. The only problem is, Again, the model is really expensive, um, so I can see a lot of conversions coming out of the current Razor Jetwing fighter for the Dark Eldar um, being turned into this. Um, and to be perfectly honest, I expect to see this uh, floating around a lot in Eldar armies. Other option I expect to see floating around a lot in the Eldar armies, again, because it's an old codex, um, is the Firestorm. This is 180 points for a heavy six uh, sky firing intercepting uh, scatter laser. So, you know, it's it's pretty good. It's still got the transport capacity that, that any Falcon chassis grav tank has. So you can still stick six guys in it who can then jump out later on and claim an objective. Um, does take up a heavy support choice, which, okay, in Eldar are somewhat sought after. Um, however, if you're perhaps doing um, the, the Mechdar style build, so you're running an Eldar army in tanks, I can see it definitely featuring there. Um, it's got a host of, of the standard Falcon Grav Tank upgrades. Um, again, a lot of them, though, are useless in 6th or at least seem very expensive for what they now do due to the changes in rules. Um, however, it was definitely worth upgrading the um, the under-nose gun to a Shuriken Cannon from the from the Shuriken Catapults. On to Tau, we've got the, uh, the Barracuda Air Superiority Fighter. Uh, it's a fast attack choice. Um, which um, you know isn't too bad. Um, Tau have, uh, depending on what sort of army you use, um, either have no fast attack slots free or loads of fast attack slots free. Um, I think its its weaponry seems to be a bit at odds with what it does. Um, you know, it's okay at taking down. Well, you know. Battle suits, oddly enough. That's the one thing it is actually very good at taking down due to being strength 7 AP 3 with its main gun. Um, it seems to be a vehicle that's a bit all over the place at the moment. I'm not sure if someone else perhaps can, can find a better way of using it um, than I can. But at the moment on paper I think it doesn't do what stuff in the, in the Tau Codex can't already do. However, on the other side, we've got um, a, a 1 to 5 fast attack choice, which is the Remora Drone Fighter. Which I actually think is, is reasonably good. Um, it's a flyer, so it's difficult to hit. It's shrouded, so it's actually a 3 plus cover save when it's moving around. Um, like I said, you can take squadrons of them. Um, they've got a twin linked strength 5 gun. Um, okay, they're not vector dancering or anything like that, but they also have seeker missiles and a networked marker lights. So they can potentially drop quite a bit of firepower between a squadron of them. I'm not sure you'd want to take a whole squadron of five, to be honest. Maybe two in a squadron, three at most should be plenty. Um, but again, I think this is a, a reasonably worthwhile um, addition to the Tau army. Um, unfortunately, that's now the end of the Tau section of the book. And there's no broadside upgrade for, uh, for sky firing, which I'm quite surprised at. But it's very possible, I imagine, they're saving that for the new codex. Although when that comes out, of course, is another debate. The one and only Dark Eldar entry um, is frankly atrocious um, compared to their Codex flyers. It's 205 points for a heavy 10 essentially splinter cannon and a single twin link Dark Lance. You know, okay, it's got things like, uh, you know, night vision because it's a Dark Eldar vehicle, deep strike, vector dancer, supersonic, evasive, strafing run, and sky assassin, which allows it to re-roll scatter when it arrives, when it deep strikes within 12 of another flyer. 
um, and it can take night shields and flicker field but frankly um, compared to the flyers that are already in the dark eldar codex i see absolutely no use for this vehicle at all um, i can only assume that Rumours say that there is a Dark Eldar Forge World book floating sometime in the next year or so. So I'm wondering, perhaps they're saving all the uh, all the nice Dark Eldar stuff for that. Uh, back onto Chaos now. Uh, the Hellblade, um, you know, 115 points. It's got two Reaper Auto Cannons, so that's reasonably okay. You know, you're looking at four strength, seven twin link shots a turn. Um, it isn't piloted by a Chaos Marine though. It's piloted by some sort of corrupted guardsman I'd imagine because it's only got ballistic skill 3 um, it's only got 2 hull points as well um, however it is agile so it has a plus 1 to its cover save so it's got 4 um, again I can't really comment on this one at the moment because you know rumours have got the chaos decks hitting in the next month or two depending on which rumours you listen to um, however at the moment I think it's reasonably okay um, it's good for taking out transports and perhaps other flyers Hell Talon however is, is somewhat better it's much higher points cost it's only 15 points shy of 200 points however it's a flyer with 4 hull points um, again though it's only armour 10 um, and ballistic skill 3 so I'm not sure if it will survive particularly well um, it does however have strafing run um, it has a single Reaper auto cannon, but it has eight bombs which it can drop, um, and it has got a, a small list of options. Um, again, I think it all depends on on what the new Chaos Codex brings when that arrives. Dreadclaw, it's it basically it's a Chaos drop pod. Um, it doesn't have the drop pod assault rules. However, it is a drop pod that can land and then move around. Um, it has three hull points, um, and it is an assault vehicle. So, okay, you know, you can't use it the turn you arrive from Deep Strike. However, um, a unit must be placed inside it. A unit can either be 10 strong or a Dreadnought. Um, you know, I think, okay, it's 85 points and a fast attack slot. However, potentially, it could be quite good and it allows for a lot of pre heresy style drop pod, uh, or sorry, post heresy style drop pod assault armies. Right, that is the end of our look at the 6th edition flyer units that are approved for 40k um, from Imperial Armour Aeronautica. Um, we may do another review like this again, um, perhaps when uh, we get one of the new codexes out. So if people are interested, then let us know.